Hey, thanks for watching. This is Jesse, and I'm going to be reviewing All the Lies They Did Not Tell, the true story of satanic panic in a Italian community by Pablo Trinchia. Now, I actually got two copies of this book. I got one through NetGalley, which was an ARC, and then I got one through Prime First Reads because I forgot that I got the, the ARC from NetGalley. So I read the ARC. I didn't read the completed version yet. And this follows the investigator, journalist, reporter, Pablo, as he and his um, partner, Alessia, look into the satanic panic in this um, Italian community of Bassa Modelis in the 90s. And this is after the satanic panic in the United States back in the 80s. And this one in, in this Italian community starts with a boy named Dario. Now, Dario says something to the effect of his brother and sister were joking around under the covers or something like that, which concerned his teacher. And then they got social services involved who hired a psychologist. The initial psychologist said that there was nothing untoward happening. It was just something the child said. Yes, the home situation wasn't ideal. They were very poor. Um, and they, I think there was some, um, some animosity between the parents at that time. But there wasn't anything bad happening. Well, then they hired another psychologist, and this psychologist was really young. I think she was 21 or 23, and she had specialized in, like, children of sexual trauma. It was a very specialized field, and this is who they brought in. And she said, oh, absolutely, this child is being sexually abused at home um, by the brother, the father, the mother's taking him or the mother's taking the sister to these sex parties where she lets men have their way with her. And it just goes from there. This kid starts naming other kids who were allegedly taken with him to cemeteries in the middle of the night. And then these kids were taken from their parents. And it just, it snowballs into this amazing, fantastical story. And it's hard to believe the the problem that I'm having with this review is that how do you how do you listen to something like this out of children and dismiss it so the problem though is that some of these children never actually said this in addition to that the way that psychologists were running these interviews back then is not like they would run them now there's a lot of um, you know, when you work in a corporate setting and you deal with customer service, they say not to use negative language because that's a form of psychology. You don't want to tell the customer no. Don't tell them what you can't do. Tell them what you can do. There are certain ways of asking questions that are considered leading, which will get cases thrown down in court. So like if you're being interviewed and they ask you specifically, did this person have brown hair? that can get thrown out because it can it can insert memory false memories into your mind and I've taken a couple psychology classes in college and it's it's scary it is truly scary what can be done with psychology if you get somebody like right after the right after a traumatic incident and you ask them leading questions over and over and over again eventually their memory is going to morph into a more mirrored image of, of your leading questions. So let's say somebody gets hit by a blue car, but the investigators asking them, were you hit by a red car? 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 Eventually their story is going to change to, it was a red car. And it's very disturbing, especially when it comes to this story. So this investigator, this journalist, they got a hold of this because the parents were, I mean, this is years later. The, the, the investigation took place, I think like 20 years after, after the children were taken away from the parents and it was a big, big thing 
the the trials the he calls it a witch hunt this author is very clear on what his stance on this is uh, there's times where he's pretty snarky um, about not the children but the psychologists and the way that they run things and the investigators and the things that they allow to happen and um, it's <laughs> oh my goodness so he starts investigating this and this is absolutely devastating this one girl who who never actually Im, uh, implicated I was gonna say implemented implicated her mother she was taken away from her mother when she was eight and her mother went nuts she tried to get her back and she kept being told that she couldn't and eventually the mom ended up committing suicide because she just couldn't stand to be away from her daughter and there's other families where I mean I think four or five people died of heart attacks just from the stress of, of this and the way that the psychologist did it also it isn't like here in America now where if a family of children is taken away the child services agency attempts to keep those children together because they're siblings once children were taken away if there were multiple children taken away from one household they weren't even allowed to talk to each other they weren't allowed to talk to their parents they weren't allowed to talk to their siblings they were taken out of their schools put in foster homes with people who mostly were elderly people and it's it's devastating like the psychological effects that all this had on these children he went back and he talked to some of them they're paranoid um, they are not sure whether or not anything happened. They, some of them had a feeling that they were coerced into saying the things that they said in the trials and in the interviews. In fact, a couple of them, once they were done in the trials, they would look at the psychologist, psychologist and say, did I get it right? I got to tell you, this is one of the more, more disturbing books that I've ever read simply because it's true and because of the subject matter. And the author re references uh, Katia al Untore, which is in the 17th, 16th and 17th centuries, there were people who were hunted down because they thought that they were plague spreaders and they were essentially murdered or lyn lynched. And he also um, referenced the Jewish scapegoat ritual, which is um, the um, sacrifice sacrificing a goat so essentially putting all your sins into the goat that way you are relieved of the sins that you've um, that you've committed he references the witch hunt and it, it's it's so so sad a mother commits suicide there's a mother who once she's interviewed by this journalist she secretly records a message on his tape recorder so that he can give it to her daughter if he ever sees her because she's afraid she's never going to see him again and in in this she's just telling her daughter that she wants nothing from the law she doesn't want money um, she begs the journalist for just half an hour with her daughter before she dies like I said some of the parents died of heart attacks um, there's this one brother who went looking for his sister and when she rejected him even though he had nothing to do with any of the accusations that took place he he broke down like he couldn't believe that you know he had spent so long looking for his sister and she wanted nothing to do with him and it, it morphed from the children saying that they were you know being abused by their parents their siblings into their parents were taking them to these satanic rituals they were taking them into cemeteries at night they were being forced to partake in ritualistic killings of animals. Um, in fact, in one of the more um, rather extreme claims, they said that they were forced to kill dozens of children from other countries. And I think that that, more than anything, is where the journalist had a problem with the stories. And so he, he went back and he looked and they never found any any proof of these ritualistic killings of the children from other countries um, of course they there's the possibility that because they were from other countries they may not have been in the system so they wouldn't have been registered as missing but there was 
there was a lot going on here that if it had been true it it, it would have it would have been a little bit different like there's places like some of the cemeteries he went to some of the cemeteries and there were houses around the cemeteries and he interviewed the neighbors and they're like no the police never interviewed us and he's like you never saw people digging up graves and uh, doing things with the bones of the dead and then reburying them and having children abused in the middle of the night and rituals and ma black masses and the people around the cemetery were like no we would have seen that and a lot of these were really small towns and so if there was a coven of witchy pedophiles there it's not something that would have gone unnoticed for long um, children disappearing uh, at around dinner time to go to the cemeteries and their parents never knew allegedly it's just it's 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 a hard it's a hard story to swallow and I know we had a lot of uh, I know we had a lot of that here in the US and the East. in fact one of my favorite books um, in the land of winter by Richard Grant and I'm sorry it's a really really rough copy I've, I've had it for a long time and I've read it a lot <laughs> um, it actually kind of touches marginally on that it is it's about this um wiccan woman pippa whose daughter is taken away from her and um it's because they think that she's a satanic witch so she, but i mean if you read the story i mean like she goes to the woods she puts some special objects that that mean something to her and on a little altar and i mean but it turns into something it's not they take her daughter away from her and she goes through heck trying to get her daughter back and that's and it's a very mild version of of all the lies they did not tell and it's a fictional version of it as well all the lies they did not tell was was pretty it was brutal to read because also some of the stories that the children were telling it, it was hard to read it as a mom because honestly if my child came to me and told me that like if i'd burn the world down <laughs> I mean, I, how can you how can you listen to a child say that? And I can understand where the judges, the police officers, the lawyers, the the jury. I can understand where they were coming from because you hear these things from children, and you're just how do you keep breathing? But the psychology behind it is questionable. There's no denying that. And so, in the end, he does find some people who say, "Oh yeah, that never happened." most definitely the psychologists were leading me but I mean it doesn't I don't think it definitively proves or disproves rather that these stories ever happen um, I think that the the patient zero so to speak Dario I think that there was a lot wrong with him there was a lot going on emotionally psychology psychologically at home that may have pushed him into saying these things and causing this whole thing but it was it was absolutely a devastating read so because of the the way that the author wrote it with his opinion just so forward i think that's what is pushing me more towards a four star rating than a five star rating but man it was a captivating read because it was like watching a train wreck you just i couldn't look away and it was it was a pretty it was a pretty short read I, I can't remember exactly how long it was but um, I don't think I'm gonna go read the finalized copy even though I have one simply because I have so many other things on my on my to read list right now and so many other things going on we're going to be going to Tennessee this weekend we're taking our kids to a hotel with a with a water park so hopefully that's when I just saw Mike's book reviews weekly update from last week and I saw that he was wearing a Nightwish uh, shirt which I may have squealed a little bit when I saw that but I wanted to share with you that these shoes that I got they are the Nightwish shoes for the Human Nature album they are absolutely amazing I love them I love them so much I normally don't I normally don't go out of my way to order um, special shoes or things from overseas but um, those ones I absolutely had to have but anyway uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope you, um, I don't know if I hope you checked the story out. It was, it was deeply disturbing in, in my, in my opinion, but there you have it. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe below.